Hey, Hound Dogs, I'm David Hankins. And I'm Paul Hankins. And I'm Trevor Hankins. And welcome to A Week in Power Squared. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, this Max Fleischer Superman series, which is why Trevor's joining us. Uh, but we'll give you a little update on Power Squared. We are still working on issues 13 and 14. Yes. Uh, we just got the first eight pages inked from uh, Rachel. Yeah. And so we're kind of excited about that as we move forward. And then we're also uh, still working on the idea of getting them available for, on Kindle. Yeah. So we just work on that this week. We're not quite ready yet to publish them. But um, all that said, uh, we hope everybody is staying home and staying safe and healthy. Uh, and while you're home, uh, you might be looking for something new to watch. Yes. And we thought we'd recommend something old to watch. And that is the Max Fleischer uh, series uh, here uh, from Warner Brothers. Uh, it's a it's actually in public domain and available at other sources, but these are nice restored uh, versions of the series. Yes. There were uh, 17 theatrical shorts. Uh, before we get too far into it, uh, how did this come to our attention? Well, uh, in my writing animation class and your other animation classes. Yeah, it came up in a history of animation class. All right. <sighs> uh, we were recommended to watch Fleischer Superman uh, because of how well it was done for a 40s cartoon. This was also mentioned in the animation magazine? Did yes. You it? Uh, it was... Yeah, in, in an issue of Animation Magazine, it was uh, part of a list of, like, ten uh, cartoons that animation students should watch. Okay. And so we finally decided to actually buy them. Yes. To watch. And um, since it's in public domain, there are sometimes more than one version out there. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to harp on it, but we did buy a version on Blu-ray, uh, and there was some... Issues with the image being kind of washed out and uh, the sound right. not syncing. Yeah, the audio syncing was a big problem in that one. Yeah. There's also a watermark on, in the corner of every card. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, we then decided to find another version, which ended up being this one. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. The infant of Krypton is now the man of steel. Superman! Now, the history of the Fleischer sorts is interesting as well. What happened was Paramount approached Fleischer Studios, uh, who are known best for Popeye and Betty Boop, uh, to do uh, Superman. Uh, first, Max and David Fleischer uh, didn't want to do it because of how expensive it would be to do it correctly. So they threw out this really big number of how much it would cost to produce an episode. But then Paramount threw the money at them anyway, so they were like, well, I guess we better make these. <laughs> <laughs> so why are the are these shorts uh, considered so good? Uh, I think it has, it has to do with the animation and the storytelling. Okay. Uh, the animation is very fluid, very detailed, uh, especially for a 1940s cartoon. Watching it now, you kind of wouldn't believe that it was from that period of time. Right. Like, yeah. It holds up really well, even, like, compared to some contemporary animation. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, very fluid, very detailed. Uh, the color palette gives a kind of a n gritty noir vibe to it, mm -hmm. which uh, helps it stand out from other cartoons of the time. The action is framed very well with a uh, very dynamic camera placement, and you get a real sense of how powerful Superman really is, like, the weight of his movements and... Punches. Right. One of the things that I liked about uh, this is the presentation of Superman himself. Yeah. Uh, he is that he is in. You know, we we know that he's invincible, but he actually struggles a lot of times. He's been either he's, you know a beam of a, a power beam is forcing him down, or he or he's knocked to the ground, or he's a great weight on him and stuff. He's not just walking around, bullets, bullets do bounce off of him, but he has to actually struggle to, you know, overcome the obstacles. It's not just this walking in the door, in, in, you know, fully invincible. Yeah. Which is kind of nice. And I think that's kind of a, a good reflection of, you know, you have to struggle to get ahead as opposed to just it comes you know, just so easily to him. Yeah. It does, you know, so I, I really like the depiction they have of Superman. And one thing that... 
I've heard, and you can confirm this, is that before this cartoon, Superman didn't fly in the comic book. That's right. In the comics, uh, Superman could leap tall buildings in a single bound, like they say Which is in the title sequence. <laughs> yeah. Um, but when they actually animated that, it looked silly. Mm-hmm. So they thought it would be easier to just make him fly. So they asked DC, can we make him fly? And DC was like, sure, he can fly. Yeah. <laughs> and so the Superman we all know now flies. Yeah. Yeah. And then also interestingly, Superman in the short is voiced by the guy who played Superman in the radio play. Right. So that was a good continuity. Yeah. And familiarity with the character. So there's Clark Kent's Superman and then there's also Lois Lane. Yeah. Who is a competitive reporter on the Daily Planet. Yes. Uh She's presented here as, I, I would think, for the 1940s, especially a modern woman. She's uh, a, the top reporter on a major daily newspaper, which was probably not that common at the time. Uh, she's shown to fly airplanes, to use machine guns, uh, to ignore what the guys say. You know, stay back, Lois. And Lois does not stay back. She gets right involved in the action. And at the same time, she always needs to be rescued. Every one of these episodes that we watched is Lois Lane getting in trouble with Superman having to rescue her. Right. Which was probably also reflective of sort of this idea of women in the 40s is that, you know, you can be independent to a point, but you need a man to sort of come through for you. <laughs> this looks like a job for Superman. And Superman, of course, is that man for her. And um, she never has a clue that it's Clark Kent. Nope. Yeah, the glasses also, work really well. Yeah, it's an amazing, yeah. amazing disguise. It also gives, uh, in a way, it also gives Superman a reason to be involved in everything. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So after nine episodes, and these are theatrical shorts that they're, they're not weekly; they come out weeks and months apart. Yeah. Uh, but after nine episodes, uh, Paramount gave the. T- I don't know if the, I don't know if Fleischer st- didn't want to make them anymore, or uh, Paramount was looking for a cheaper alternative. But there's eight more uh, that are made by famous studios. Yeah, yes. and these uh, shorts we feel aren't as good as the Fleischer shorts. There, it's the same sort of style. It's just not quite done as well, and the detail is not quite as you know. Yeah, it's not as polished. Right. But you can there and some of them, like you can tell, they were trying to sort of cut corners by like having characters and silhouette and stuff <laughs> right and they actually and they, and they still use the same intro that fleischer used yeah so there's i you know fleischer's not gone away from the scene totally but <laughs> um and then the stories it by that point you're really into world war ii and the stories become very uh world war ii oriented yeah and especially uh, there's i guess there's one that we saw that was sort of about the nazis but there's a couple about the japanese yeah and there's even one that's sort of like the storytelling is not quite as good because there's one where suddenly, for no reason that we know of, Clark and, and Lois are behind enemy lines and, and captured in Japan. Yeah. We have no idea how they got there. Only that Superman has to, of course, save the day. By sabotaging all the... Yeah, the Japanese naval fleet. Uh, it kind of borders a lot more on propaganda. Right. To so, be fair, there was a war at the time. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's the biggest war they had. So, yeah. Yeah. But, it, every everything in Hollywood was geared towards the war, so it's not a surprise that Superman would be part of that. Yeah, but as a result, it kind of dates it more, and uh, the depiction of the Japanese comes off as kind of racist. Yes, they're all buck Yeah, you know, it, it's it, it's sort of like watching uh, Dick Tracy cartoons, <laughs> 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 which. I remember as a kid liking, and then I, I bought a set and brought it home, and wow, those were really racist. I did not realize yeah. how bad, how much they were. <laughs> now, of course, it was a different time, mm-hmm. and it's not fair to hold it up to modern standards, but it's just worth knowing that if you watch the famous shorts, you'll have to kind of get past that. Yeah, and, th- and that, again, is also typical of, you know, the Japanese were not shown in good light during f- films made during World War II. But then, of course, we have to talk about the legacy of the Fleischer Superman shorts. Paul Dini and Bruce Timm, who were kind of behind the DC animated universe, uh, took heavy inspiration from that when animating and writing and animating uh, Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated Series, especially when it came to the uh, tone and the style of action that they were going for. So that's why these are still relevant today. 
Yeah, because people still use them as reference. Right. So we'd recommend if you've got some extra time, these are like between seven and a half and 12 minutes each. Yeah. So you could go through the whole thing in an afternoon. Uh, but we do recommend that you take some time uh, while you're staying at home and watch uh, the, the Max Fleischer Superman series. Yes. Right. If you like this video, leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to see, see more. Ring the notification bell if you want to see exactly when these videos go up. And uh, sharing and commenting uh, also helps us with... Uh, Getting the word out. Yeah. And we invite you to, if you're not a subscriber, to join the conversation at powersquaredcomicbook.com slash join. You can sign up for our newsletter. You can sign up to follow us here on Twitch, on Twitter, Instagram, uh, podcasts. We try to be everywhere. Yeah. And if you go to powersquaredcomicbook.com slash shop, you can also buy shirts like these to help support the channel and also buy issues of the comic physically and digitally. Right. All right. So until next week, I'm David Hankins. I'm Paul Hankins. And I'm Trevor Hankins. And this has been a week in Power Squared. Yeah.